other than next Sunday. All right, good morning, everybody. All right, that was, that was kind of weak for a Sunday morning. I think we can do better than that. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, that's much better. All right, so uh, but we are certainly glad that you are here this morning. We're thankful that you came out to worship. Uh, we're thankful for those who have maybe tuned in on the internet or however you're watching this service today. We're glad that you're with us. Uh, we hope it'll be a blessing to you. A few quick announcements before we start this morning and get rolling. Um, this Wednesday night, of course, we have First Kids. Uh, we'll also have Elevate Youth, our youth group for 6th grade through 12th grade. We'd love to have you out. Teenagers, I want to remind you we're going to be preaching on Genesis chapter 4 as we continue through the story of creation. Um, so please read Genesis chapter 4 before you come so you kind of have an idea of what's happening. And then use it as an opportunity to talk, your par- talk to your parents, have some discussions with them. Maybe even make it a family devotion. That'd be fantastic. Um, today at 3.30, it is the Sunday that we are going to the Life Care uh, Center. So we'd love to have you guys out for that for a short little service. And I know the people there would be uh, just just encouraged and excited to see you or your children or whoever may come out. So we'd love to have you with that. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. I am. Next Sunday, next Sunday, okay, um, Pastor Loman will not be preaching. I will be. Um, and we, if you remember, we kind of hijacked the service and we are making it a special service next Sunday. We are going to have a lot of food and event afterwards. We're going to play a church softball game. Um, pretty much all ages are welcome. If you feel that you are healthy enough to move or even to stand in a position with a glove, we want you out there on the field. Okay. We want you to participate and have fun. Um, but in regards to that, I do need a couple of gentlemen who are willing, um, and able to to grill okay so we need some grill masters in the church I saw a couple of hands go up and if you are a grill master come see me because we would love to have you help cook out for us as we have this time of fellowship next Sunday um, and we'll be hopefully doing that at the pavilion um, and then we'll be playing a softball game afterwards and I think it'll be a fun time of fellowship for our church we're gonna go ahead and stand we're gonna have a word of prayer and then we're gonna get right into the music and the worship today um, so if you would stand with us um, and we have, we have a missionary visiting us uh, today, Brother Maneri. Um, and Brother Maneri, would you mind opening us up in prayer this morning? Amen. Let's remain standing. I, I figured out why Steve needs guys to come out and grill. And it's because he's going to need that time to spend in prayer so that when my team beats up on his, he doesn't feel so bad. I think that's, I think that's what that's all about. So, is that right? I'm going to save my, uh, let my play do the talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's sing, let's sing an old time favorite. Is my name written there? Stay, remain standing and sing with us. Like the 
to that day where you get to see your name written in the book of Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Let's sing. Until then, we're going to trust and obey. Let's continue singing. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory All who will trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey, not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but it's my sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sins we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no You may be seated. I guess I need to write down how many verses I put up there, huh? Miss Lena, come on up. Sister Lena uh, Tungate is going to come and sing. Actually, the first song that I ever sang as a kid, Miss Lena, beautiful song entitled Consider the Lilies.
consider the lilies they don't toil nor spin there's not a king with more splendor than them consider the sparrows they don't plant nor sow but they're fed Who watches them grow? We have a heavenly Father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love. He really cares. you to this friend of mine who hangs out the stars tells the sun when to shine and kisses the flowers each morning with dew but he's not too busy to care about you we have a heavenly father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love he really cares when your head is bowed low consider the lilies and then you will know consider the lilies and then Thank you, Miss Lena. We're going to share together the prayer requests this morning, and uh, I want to ask you to continue to remember in prayer, if you will, Brother Bill and Miss Jeannie. Keep them before the Lord, if you would. Also, Mary Lisa, we want to continue to lift her up. Uh, Brother Walt, we want to continue to remember him in prayer. Is he doing better this morning, or still, still waiting on the surgery? So remember Brother Walt in prayer, if you will. And then we have several others that are unable to attend and unable to be here with us. Also, Sister Ware fell last night, and I think she broke a couple of ribs, and uh, she's not uh, doing, uh, she's at home, but uh, very sore. And so remember Sister Ware in prayer, if you would. Also, Brother Daniel Estrada, the work in Spain, uh, communicated with them this morning, and they uh, had a good service today. But remember them in prayer, if you would. Miss Kathy Crimmins, we want to continue to remember in prayer as well. And then our, uh, uh, some of you know Brother George and Amy Jane Show, their daughter Jessica. Just like you to remember them uh, in prayer. Remember Jessica in prayer, if you will. Also, Brother Ron Howell, uh, the uh, director of the camp there at Central Straits, will begin uh, his treatments uh, for cancer on September the f uh, 4th and 5th. And so keep Brother Ron Howe in prayer, too, if you would, and just lift him up before the Lord. Thankful for God's blessing. We're thankful for her answered prayer and all that God is doing and all that God has done in our, our midst and in the work and the ministry here. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the privilege is ours to worship you, to magnify and just to praise your holy name. 
And Father, you truly are great and faithful to us in spite of our shortcomings and sins against you. You're always faithful. Father, we lift up these prayer requests this morning. There are many that are hurting, many lives burdened right now with physical affliction. And we just pray for grace and healing. And Father, we pray for strength. And those that are going through treatments and cancer, Father, we ask you to bless. And we know that they're in your tender care. We pray you'll meet needs in their life. Bless our work in Spain. Bless Brother Daniel and the work and labor he does for you. And we just pray that souls will be saved through that work. Father, we pray that you would be with the ministries of this church. And we pray for souls and lives to be changed for eternity's sake. And Father, we thank you for the privilege to be able to give back to you this morning what you have blessed us with. Bless this offering and use it today as we give and worship you in our giving. May it further your work here on this earth. And Father, thank you for your blessings uh, upon our church and upon our families. And it's in Christ's name we pray and ask you to meet needs and lives today. In Christ's name we thank you. Amen. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper Underneath your breath I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue you. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be a shelter. I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight it's true i will rescue you i hear you whisper underneath your breath I hear you whisper, you have nothing left. I will send out an army to find you, even in the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you, even in the love the hardest fight. It's true, I will rescue you. Oh, I will rescue you.
Amen. Aren't we, aren't we fortunate to have a, a God that, that's always there for us and will never give, us, give up on us? Amen. Let's stand again. Let's, let's sing, It is well with my soul. church this morning and uh, we are thankful for the work and they're, that they are doing and uh, Brother Maneri is going to come in just a moment he's going to share a, uh, a video presentation and also be sure and introduce your family and if you have one of the old prayer cards out there that's in the uh, foyer they have really changed a lot and that's the only one I've ever seen but we are so thankful to have the Maneri's with us and uh, Brother Dave, you come on and share with us what God has laid on your heart. He's going to preach for us too. Brother Dave. Well, first let me say thank you, First Baptist and Sullivan. Thank you for all the mission committee that's come up and refreshed my memory with your faces. Um, as a missionary coming into a church, I want to tell you that this right here means the world to me. Because that means y'all have been praying for us. That's the only way that we can stay on the field. Okay? We appreciate your offerings too. You've been very, very faithful. Um, but I cherish your prayers. Because the devil likes to whisper in our ears collectively as, as mission folk that nobody loves us, nobody cares about us, and it's, and it's easier to believe when you're 8,000 miles away or 13,000 miles away on the other side of the planet 
Uh, when it's dark here, it's light over there. And when it's light over there, it's dark here. Um, thank you for your support of Daniel Estrada. Uh, he is on the field because of you. Uh, there are souls that are saved and lives that are changed in Spain and Sweden because of you. And we're very, very grateful for that. We love the Estradas. Most of all, we love the Lord, and he's the only reason why we're able to do what we do at all. Um, we've got a lot of blessings to share with you, uh, but I don't want you to get the impression that this is the Brother Dave show, okay? This, that you're going to see up here, the, all these blessings are not because Brother Dave is in Romania. It's because Brother Dave knew God was in Romania, and God asked me to come help over there, and I have been a tool in his hand, and let's see what God uh, has wrought. Okay, our first slide there is black. That's not what God did. <laughs> this next slide uh, is what God did. Okay, this is, uh, this is not my family. This is just a picture of my family. Uh, the two oldest girls on the left, they're in college in Arkansas. Uh, my wife, Melissa, is with me here. 22 years. 23 in December. See? <laughs> I'm a guy, so... 22 now, 23 in December, praise the Lord. Um, after Jessica is right next to me there in that picture, uh, on my, my right, your left, uh, Amanda is next to her, she's number two daughter. Uh, Katie is in the cry room there, you can see her, she's, she's waving. Uh, they love it when I get all their attention on them. Uh, she's taking care of Kenna, <clears throat> Kenna is six. Uh, she's our special needs jewel, she has autism and uh, but autism doesn't have her. She's a, she's a fighter, and she's, a, she's full of love. We love her to pieces. Uh, and Luke, he's not, it's not, my kids aren't in that order, but I just happened to point out that Katie's taking care of McKenna. And then Luke is 13. Uh, you can't believe it uh, by his height, six foot tall. A 13-year-old shouldn't be six foot tall. It's not right. Uh, I only say that because I'm not. Next slide shows our county, okay, in, in <clears throat> Romania is the size of Missouri and Arkansas put together and then tilted sideways kind of, okay. A uh, lot of land mass, 22 million people. Um, they don't have <clears throat> counties or states. Uh, they have kind of a county state system and they call them Judetsuls and there's our Judetsul up there. <clears throat> We've got a county seat and that's uh, Turgovish Day. Turgovish Day has over 2,000 people. Uh, we minister in smaller cities. Uh, I think Puchasa, where we started the work uh, the second time, um, probably 12,000 people in the city of Brunesh, probably 4,000. We'll talk about those. But you see the black circles up there. Uh, there's where we have a physical presence, uh, either picking up people or a church building. Uh, the red circles are where <clears throat> we want to start new buildings. Um, and new churches, of course. Um, and we're not going to do it with Brother Dave going out and being the face of all these new works. Uh, I'm going to talk about it in a little bit, <clears throat> but we've been... <coughs> um, we've been discipling uh, these preacher boys that are coming up through our Bible Institute, and it's through them uh, that God is going to reach Romania. Okay. God's not going to re reach Romania through Brother Dave. Okay. I know who I am. I know my, my uh, shortcomings. And language is one of them. Uh, I had a five-year-old come up to me, and, and just, just so you know, we've been in Romania almost 15 years. We're starting our 15th year. Um, I can speak the language. Uh, I know a lot of vocabulary, and I know the grammar rules, and now I know when I make a mistake. Okay. I can catch myself. Um, but my accent always gives me away, and there are times where my grammar suffers. Uh, just so you know how to pray for me, um, in English we have two words, very common, this and that. We all know those words, right? In Romania, they have 46 variations of this and that. You've got to match gender, you've got to match tense, you've got to match person, first place thing, okay? All those combinations drive me crazy. <laughs> but a little five-year-old came up to me and said, Brother Dave, you talk like a baby. <laughs> so 
The people over in Romania are very, very patient with me. Um, we don't have a language school, so I have learned Romanian by going out every single day, every day, and embarrassing myself. And when you embarrass yourself in the language, you tend to remember, don't do that again. Melissa's taken a different tack. She, uh, she actually studies. Um, never liked that way of doing things. Uh, talking's always been more fun. But uh, Melissa has taught herself the language so that she can minister to the ladies. She's got a ladies' uh, Bible study, and we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, the last thing I wanted to point out on the map is the little blue arrow. That's the proposed site of the Women's Domestic Violence Shelter and church camp. Now, 50% of Romanian men are alcoholics, and that's a government statistic, so I have no idea what it really is. But just so you know how bad the problem is, every Romanian has a grape arbor in their yard, and it's not for table grapes. You understand what I'm talking about. Uh, every Romanian has a still. And most of the plums are grown so that they can make plum brandy. And unfortunately, two years ago, we had a bumper crop of, of plums, and all the people in church were just so happy. And I said, well, I said, yeah, God has blessed us, but watch out this next year. We're going to have a problem with people passing out in the streets, and um, no less than three, four, five times uh, people have passed out right in front of our gate, and I've had to wake them up and get them, which way is your house? Okay, let's go that way, you know, and because uh, you don't want to run over them with your car, um, so you get them moving, you get, and hopefully they go, but um, fall down drunks are rare in Romania, but functioning alcoholics are the norm, and that creates a whole bunch of different problems, uh, one of which, of course, is domestic violence. Um, we have one shelter that can hold six ladies and, and her, their kids. And the director, we minister there, and the director said, is there a way that, uh, because I told him how we are supported, uh, missionaries in our fellowship, uh, how individual churches and individuals uh, will collectively help us stay on the field because we're not allowed by law to have a job over in Romania, so we rely on the offerings of churches to be over there. And he said, those churches that you visit, is there any of them that might help you build a domestic violence shelter? So uh, we were praying about that, and God kind of opened the door for a church camp, because we bought some land, 12 acres for a church camp, and we'll see the pictures in a second. But then I was thinking maybe those, if we have a domestic violence shelter kind of hidden in the back in the woods, that those ladies that come there and we minister to, they could cook and clean in exchange for room and board. Now, we would take care of them anyway. You know that. But to them who have been subject to that abuse and feeling worthless, uh, there's nothing better than the ability to contribute uh, for your well-being. I mean, they're able to work then and care for their kids that they've got with them and have a feeling of self-worth. Um, that will help them emotionally, but we know their real problem is spiritual, don't we? They need Jesus. And any of you who've been to church camp know the feeling that when you get away from the world, and we, we don't get cell service up there, so even the Romanian kids are like this. Okay, for those of you on, on the radio, um, I just did the kids walking zombified with their thumbs twitching on their phone. That's, that's the thing I did. Uh, so they do that too over there. And if we can get them away from distractions and just get alone with Jesus, Jesus can change lives. Amen? But those ladies that help, that cook and clean, that stay in the background, they get to hear the message too. They get to listen to the Bible stories and studies and, and lessons, and I'm, I'm excited about that. So you pray for that ministry too. We'll go into more detail in a second. The next slide shows uh, this is what God did. Okay? We built the building in back, but God built the church in front. Okay? We know the church isn't the building. Uh, we're very thankful for buildings, aren't we? Amen. Um, thankful for air conditioning. We don't have it in Romania, but we're thankful when we visit a church that does. Um, but what's precious about that picture right there is those are the souls that First Baptist Church in Sullivan has helped to meet Jesus. Through your offerings and your prayers, that's what happens. 
Now, that guy all the way to the right, um, his name is Coasty. He's standing right in front of his daughter. His daughter's wearing the black outfit with the white shirt. You see her there? And he's got a blue T-shirt with a, like a jogging outfit on, on over it. Uh, that's Coasty, and he is one of those functioning alcoholics. Okay? He works for a living, but then on the way home, he always stop, stops at the tavern, and uh, his buddies buy him beer because he's really funny when he gets drunk and falls down a lot. And so they'll buy him beer just to mock him. Okay, uh, So imagine his frustration at being laughed at every day of his life. And then he comes home drunk to his family. Well, his wife, Magdalena, I can't see. She's standing right next to him holding her baby. Uh, they've got ten kids total, actually. Um, when we first got there, they had six. And so they've had the last four since uh, we arrived. Um, but Magdalena got saved as a result of Vacation Bible School. There was uh, five verses on a three-by-five card, and if the kids memorized all five, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, on Friday they got a chocolate bar. Now, most Romanians' kids never got their own chocolate bar. Okay? It's a luxury. So they worked really hard, and they pestered their mom. Mama, help me learn these. Mama, help me learn these. So she helped them learn them, and it happened to be the Romans' road. We're sneaky like that, aren't we? Um, and through that, she learned that she was a sinner. Well, she probably already knew that, don't we all? But she learned there's consequences to her sin. But she learned that Jesus paid those consequences on the cross so that she doesn't have to pay him if she accepts him as person. And she did. And then she started bringing the kids, and that made Coasty mad because then for usually about four hours every Sunday, because we used to do Sunday morning, Sunday night, and now we move the Sunday night up and kind of attached it to Sunday morning. So our Sunday morning service is three hours long. And what was happening is we would go pick everybody up with the church vans and everyone would come Sunday morning and everyone would get there, everyone would get in, uh, do services real quick, get back out and get, get home. Okay, no time for fellowship. And the other problem is we'd send the same group of vans out and they'd come back a third, a quarter full because people got busy and did their stuff and didn't come back. Well, if I got them there, they were already there and they had to stay for now Sunday night service in the afternoon. And we have a little fellowship time where they get some snacks and, and can sit down and actually get to know each other. It's work for us. Uh, but Costi was mad because now she's gone for a big chunk of time. He's sitting at home, heavy lifting, usually 16 ounces at a time, so she gets home, and he would beat her for coming to church. Okay, men, honesty time. If one of these precious ladies came to church, black and blue, because she was coming to church, how would that make you feel? What would you want to do? Okay, I didn't want to be very Christian. I'll be honest. One guy that knew of the situation that wasn't part of our group, but he was friend of a friend of a friend, came up to me and he said, I can make that problem go away for $1,000. <laughs> no, I never actually counted my cash because I knew that that's not the answer. Because God took a two by four, smacked me upside the head and said, you were not deserving of my love either. You are not a very nice guy either. And I love both of you the same. Oh, okay, then what are we going to do, God? Paralyze him. Do something. And I heard God as clearly as if it was audible say, just love him. So the church decided to ask if it was okay to remodel their house. Because they, at that time, of course, they had six kids and they kept having them. And they had like a 400 square foot house. And so they would pack and stack them in there. So the church decided that as we were building that church there, when there wasn't offerings coming in and we kind of were in a waiting phase, that they would raise their own funds for building materials for their house and remodel it. And so we did, and we would go visit them, and they, he would leave because he was like crazy Baptist coming over and I don't know what you're what you just, and he'd grumble and walk away. Okay. And after a couple weeks, he would grumble and stay. 
And he's, he is he, weirdos, Baptist, bunch of Baptist weirdos coming to my house. And, and then, yeah, we were weird, but we were weird kind of like he's weird. And all of a sudden, he's, he's laughing with us. And he's handing us stuff as we're building. And then he starts hammering and painting next to us. And then he got laid off while we were building our building. And he came and helped us, and I helped his family. And he got saved Easter about five years ago, praise the Lord. That's what your support does in Romania. Next slide. Uh, discipleship through Bible Institute and personal one-on-one -on -one discipling with uh, Melissa with the ladies, of course, and me with the men. Uh, God's raised up four preacher boys that have announced their call to preach. Uh, one is the interim pastor there in the work in Brunesht. Um, I wanted to take the other ones two by two and start new works in those red circles that we were showing you. Next slide. This is Melissa's ladies' Bible study. Uh, some of these ladies have introduced their husbands to Christ through their behavior. Um, their husbands were one because of the love of their wife. The husbands didn't deserve it and knew they didn't deserve the love. Magdalene is one of those, I believe. She put up with a lot, but she still loved her husband like Jesus loved him. He was not loving. He was not lovable, certainly. But now he is saved and a member of the church and faithful to what God's doing there. So we're very, very grateful to her uh, teaching those ladies to love like Jesus loves as well. Next slide. Vacation Bible School, of course we do that. Uh, the lady without the head in the picture, that's Sora Magdalena. She's got a head in real life, don't worry. Um, she's a precious lady. And, and that building that we're doing that VBS in right there is the build add-on to their house. Uh, they let us use it as a thankfulness for what we did for their family, but they're using it for Jesus. So we praise God for that. Next slide. Melissa's orphanage work. Okay, when I first surrendered to preach, uh, Melissa told me something that she had never shared with me. Melissa had a secret our whole marriage. You see, a missionary from Romania had come to her church, and God put a, a burden on her heart to reach Romanian orphans, and a guy from Seattle just doesn't go accidentally go to Romania so that we could work with orphans. But God brought me there and called me to be a Romanian missionary. So when I told her about what I felt as my call to be, she was already ready already. It was just God had to work on me for a while. So uh, she gets to minister to these precious orphans. Um, it is a great blessing. But Melissa doesn't just minister to the orphans. She ministers to the orphanage facility workers, uh, telling them that Jesus loves them and cares for them. And she, Melissa, helps meet some of their needs. And, and most of all, she just shows love. She kind of right oozes love. It just gets all over everything. Next slide. Uh, this is Stefan, uh, baptized him, his son, and his grandbabies got to watch. And Stefan invited his extended family, which is unusual in Romania because uh, Romania has a national religion. It's the Romanian Orthodox Church. It's the Greek Orthodox split off of Catholicism. Uh, Romanian will tell you they are not Catholic because they pray to different saints. Their priests can marry. And Catholics are bad. Okay, they're not Catholic. Oh, okay. But still, every doctrine lines up perfectly with the Catholic Church, except, of course, their priests can marry. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us. Uh, when someone gets saved in Romania, their family's like, yeah, who cares? When they get rebaptized, rebaptized because they're all baptized as babies, when they get rebaptized, their family will disown them. Sometimes they'll have a mock funeral. When they pass on the street, if they see their family member who's saved and baptized coming, they'll go to the other side. Never invite them over to their house, which is a serious problem in a country that is built on family, much like the Estradas working in Spain, very family-oriented. You're ostracized for your family. It hurts. Stefan didn't care. He invited his entire family, and about half of them came. You could tell. Uh, you'll see the picture better um, we have a bridge, people walk, and some of his family came, got dropped off on the bus and had to walk the rest of the way. And you could tell that there was family because they were doing this. And then they'd walk in our gate, okay? Nobody saw me. 
right? So they came in and they, and they come into the Baptist church and they're all, they know God's going to strike them dead because they go in the, in, the, in the Baptist church, okay? Because the Baptists are evil. The priest told them over and over again, Baptists are evil. Don't go into the Baptist church. But Stefan was getting married. They love Stefan, so they're coming in. And then they see the baptistry. You see, for us, it's a small baptistry, right? Very small. But it's, I mean, it's got sufficient water, of course, for the picture. But um, their churches have a different baptistry, right? A little bowl, because they just on the baby, and that's it. They get, what is all the water for? And they don't know I'm listening. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm handling things, and, and they think I'm distracted. And they're going to kill him. They're going to, I tell you, they're going to drown him. Why else would they need so much water? And then, you know how we perform baptisms, right? But Stefan said, be sure you share the gospel and share the gospel and share the gospel. I've been trying to tell, and they won't listen to me. Every time I bring up God, they say, ah, oh, you're a repenter. Yeah, I don't want to listen to you. Because we believe you need to repent in order to get saved, right? Romanian Orthodox Church says no. When you're baptized as a baby, you are washed of original sin, you're clean, and now you can do more good works than bad, and eventually you might get into heaven. If you pay the priest, that's points in your favor, right? Because he'll pray, he'll pray you in. If you don't make it, you can go to purgatory, and maybe he, your, your family can help pray you out and pay you out, right? But we believe it's through repentance. So they call us repenters. That's the bad word, okay? That's a four-letter word in Romania. Poke eats. It's not actually four letters, but you know what I mean. He said, Tell, share the gospel. So I did at least three times. And uh, I, you know, baptized you in the name of the Father and Son. And put him down. Eyes got big. And I so, I so want to just keep him just a little bit. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Right back up again. Raised to walk in newness of life. Oh. And could share that through repentance and being cleansed by the blood, we are dead to the old man, right? And raised a new man has nothing to do with sin. Well, I didn't wash any of Stefan's sins away. The blood of Jesus Christ did. Amen? Okay, next slide. This is a group that came over in uh, uh, 2006, and I just leave that picture up there because uh, that group was, was the first one, and, and all the groups since have been very instrumental. If you get a chance to go on a mission trip uh, to help your missionary or any of the missionaries that you support, do it, because uh, you will come back changed, and hopefully you can set a fire with those that are, still remain. But the impact you make, uh, I've heard it refer I've referred to as jet fuel for the mission work, and it is. We are able to just... <laughs> take off because of uh, the love and the, and the sharing. Okay, next slide. This is the land before. Next slide shows us working on it. And the final slide, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we're working on it. And next slide shows what God did. Our building's worth about $480,000, and it, it costs us about 100, between 120 and 180. Uh, it's not really sure because most of our work on it was donated. Okay, uh, the men of the mission work uh, did the majority of the work. We didn't call any in, uh, independent contractors to come out and help us. Um, our cross is about 12 feet tall there, and you see, I'm standing on the bridge to take the picture. That's the bridge that the folks were walking on uh, to come see Stefan's baptism. Um, and uh, Romanians will stop and take pictures of that. Crosses are big deals in Romania um, because they, you know, that all the time. Um, but it's a good testimony for the community that we, we care about God, so we'll put a cross on the building. Okay, but it opens up others' doors. Next slide shows the European outreach. Some of the best and brightest of Romania are going into other countries to find work. We want our people, if they go, and they have, and the red, circle, or red arrows are everywhere where we have sent folks. And we want them to go as missionaries to start new works in what I believe is the last push of the gospel uh, before Jesus returns. Next slide shows kind of some of the funny things that God can do sometimes. Um, the current pastor of, of the work there in Brnesh, uh, his phone fell and broke while he was helping us build, and we got it repaired, and the guy asked, how did this happen? And I said, well, he's helping us build. And he said, where's your accent from? Because he couldn't place my accent. And I said, well, I'm from America. He said, what are you doing here? And I got to share why God called us there. And he said, I heard in, in America when Americans change over their, get an upgrade of phone, they just throw their old phone away. 
And I said, no, they don't do that. I said, sometimes they'll sell it or uh, turn it into the place they upgrade or they give it to their kids. And he said, they give phones to kids? Now, this was back when the iPhone 5 just came out. So that shows you how long ago it was. Now all of Romania has phones too. But this guy says, if you can get me any of those, I'll talk to my buddy who owns the lumber yard and he can get you, I'm sure, materials at cost, which he has, um, and I'll just give him the money for whatever phones you bring me. And I said, in my head, ten, what, $10 a phone? That's going to be more trouble than it's worth. He says, if you can get me any of those iPhone 4s, because the iPhone 5 just came out, I'll give you $250 worth of building materials. Okay. And so we've gotten like $9,800 worth of building materials from people's old cell phones. So if you've got an old cell phone or tablet now, tablets or laptops or pretty much anything that's fun that you can plug in, uh, we can turn into cash. So uh, you get it to Brother Loman, and we'll coordinate and get it over to Romania. Just a thought. Next slide shows uh, the domestic violence shelter at church camp. I talked about that, 12 acres. Uh, we've got 10 phases of $25,000 each phase. Uh, we're through the first three phases, praise the Lord, with purchasing the land. Uh, a lot of the government paperwork and fees and bri not, not bribes, but uh, made-up fees, you know those. Um, that they all of a sudden invent because they know an American's involved. Uh, the first American TV show that was shown in Romania was Dallas. So we all have our own oil wells, Cadillacs. That's what they think of America. So the rich Americans in town, so all the new fees are, are, are set up. Um, so pray for that, uh, that we'll get into the new uh, phase of the foundation and the road to leading up to camp. I just praise God for the site. Very, very excited for that. First couple years probably will be intense, but uh, we'll be away from the distractions. Amen? Next slide. This is how you can pray for us. Now, uh, I thought I was clever, Brother Loman. I went on the, the World Wide Web and, and said, there's got to be new ways to... Um, Besides just prayer cards, prayer cards are good, uh, but there's got to be a, a, a new thing. You know, pens, if you've ever been to the National ABA meeting, there's pens everywhere, okay? So I looked on one. One had a special for bumper stickers. I said, maybe it, they may not put it on the car, but they may keep it around, stick it on something else. And it, it was a hundred for, no, a thousand for 39 bucks. Okay. So design it yourself, put my picture on it. And I said, clever, honk if you love... No, no, honk, not honk if you love, because that got people in trouble. Uh, honk for the Maneri family. That's what I had. Honk for the Maneri family, Romanian missions. Okay, clever. And they came, and I ordered business cards the same size. Well, the business cards came first. I opened them up. Nope, it's the bumper sticker. <laughs> it's very important that you read all the details. I was supposed to change the size, apparently. Who knew? If you would like a bumper sticker for your bicycle, <laughs> just go back to that table right there. There are plenty. There's also magnets back there. Um, and share in, uh, for those of you who think missionaries are perfect, get you a sticker. Okay. Ezekiel 22. This message is going to be short because it hurts. Ezekiel was at a very... It lived in a very bad time in, in Israel's life. Ezekiel 22, uh, verse 17, it says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. That's bad. That's really, really bad. Uh, when a refiner refines metals, the yucky stuff, the impurities, the ugh, rises to the surface when it reaches a certain temperature. And what does the refiner do with it? He scrapes it off and chucks it until all that's left is the pure metal and the, the, the silver refiners. I love this. It's not pure until he can see his face in the silver. And that's what God said his people were to him, silver, but they became dross. Let's read on in verse 18. They're all brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They're even the dross of silver. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because they are all become dross, behold, I will gather you in the midst of Jerusalem, as they gather silver and brass and lead, or iron and lead and tin in the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. So I will gather you in mine anger and in my fury and leave you there and melt you. 
Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and you will be melted in the midst thereof, as silver is melted in the midst of the furnace. So shall you be melted in the midst thereof, that you may know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. Now, this is not the first time that God poured his fury on his people. You remember, well, let's read on, because this ties into it. Verse 22, or 23 and 24 says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, say to her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed nor rained upon in the day of indignation. Now, when did God use rain to judge his people and cleanse the earth? Flood, Noah, right? So God again says, It's time, because the sin is so bad, it's time to cleanse. And God's going to use a different method this time. He's going to use Babylon. And they're going to come surround the city... And the siege is going to be bad. There's going to be no food to eat. People are going to be walking around, not even be able to recognize reality because they are so exhausted, so famished. Uh, it, it was a very, very difficult time. In verse 25 uh, through 28, it talks about the leaders are even all messed up. It says there was a conspiracy of the prophets in the midst of like a roaring lion, ravening ravening the prey, and they have devoured souls, they have taken the treasure and precious things, they have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane, neither have they showed difference between the clean and unclean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood to destroy souls and, and to get dishonest gain. Her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies upon them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have uh, oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And when I see these verses, I see the Romanian government, the Romanian religious system that just takes advantage of the people. Well, unfortunately, in America, it's getting the same way. Government not looking out for her people. Do you know why God created government? To make sure that justice was for every man. Because if you have to worry about justice, you're not going to be concerned about the things of God. But God wanted the government to be pure so that the people could not be distracted by people trying to take advantage of them all the time. Now, the priests... The religious leaders don't know the difference between the profane and, and the holy. And that's happened in a lot of churches in America. You look at their worship service, streaming, and you can't tell if it's profane or clean. God puts a line in the sand in verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. You know what God's saying? God is saying, I am coming to destroy you, but if I could find someone righteous to stand in the gap of where I'm coming through, I won't destroy them. But I found no one. God's looking at this church. Okay, and I want you to know I love this church. This church has always been there for us. But God is calling on you in this place to stand in the gap because God is angry with sin. It's not right to talk about sin anymore. How dare you? What right do you have? I don't have any right to talk to you about your sin, but I have every right to tell you what God thinks about your sin. And if I don't, shame on me. Because you know what I'm doing? I'm saying, okay, there's the gap, God. Go right ahead and destroy them. I want you to stand up for those people that you love. Stand in the gap against God. Brother Dave, how can you say such a thing? We say God is love, amen? God is not just loving. First John says God is love. God is the containment of true agape love. He is love. But there's another side of that. Some religions that believe that God is just that angry judge that wants to condemn and he's all about no. And we say, shame on that. Oh, you have to live by a standard and risks and rules and, and that's horrible. But it's accurate. God does have a list of right and wrongs. And once you cross that, you are a sinner. We're all 
born inherited sinners, but you've done your fair share and so have I. We forget God is just. God requires a payment for sin. You can pay it if you want. It will take you an eternity in hell and you still won't be done paying for your sins. Or you can repent. How do you, need, or how do you know you need to repent? Because someone stood in the gap against God for you. I said, God, wait. I want to talk to him first. Before you destroy them and send them to a devil's hell, I want to talk to him first. Wait. Do you remember a man that stood in the gap for Sodom and Gomorrah? Oh, we think this is a terrible time to live. We're almost there, folks. Almost. But we're not quite there yet. And what did Abraham say? Please, God, for a hundred, if you can just find a hundred, 90, if you did 80, if you did 50, God, if you just 10, if you just find 10, please. He stood in the gap and begged God, hoping, hoping that Lot stood in the gap and Lot fell down on the job. He got sucked in and he did nothing. Couldn't even save his whole family. He was not a man for his sons-in-law. Who is God asking you to stand in the gap for? You pray for me so that I can stand in the gap against God for those poor Romanians. I'm praying for you that you can stand in the gap for your brother, your sister, your kids, your grandkids, your next door neighbor, that precious little lady that works with you, the lady at the grocery store, the guy that cuts your hair. See, I will never meet any of those people. The only person I got to meet was the lady that met me at the front desk at the Comfort Inn. Right? Maybe you know her. She needs Jesus too. But there's a sphere of influence you have that I will never reach. Brother Loman will never reach some of the people that look to you. And let me tell you, sometimes in their quiet moments, they see God coming and they're scared. Maybe they don't see it that way, but they know that judgment is coming. They know that they are not the person that they think you think they are. Who are you? God is looking in Sullivan, Missouri for someone to stand in the gap against him because God is not willing that any should perish. But his justice says they must. And if we don't stand in the gap, they will. So I'm begging you, First Baptist Church in Sullivan, stand in the gap. As a church and each individual, everyone that can hear me, stand in the gap for the place that God has called you to stand so that the anger of God will not come through the gap and destroy them. There was no one that was pure in Israel, no one to stand in the gap, and they went to Babylon as indentured as slaves and paid the consequence. I don't want anyone you know to have to pay the consequence. So you need to stand in the gap. I need to stand in the gap. We need to make a hedge. You know, God is standing with us. He has given us his Holy Spirit to stand with us, to strengthen us, to give us everything we need to make it happen. God is standing against himself because God is patient. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to him, pure and simple. He wants a relationship with everyone that's ever been born, but they're not going to hear 
unless they have a preacher. I'm not going to preach unless they've been sent. And this church is sending you out. Every single time you meet, you go right back out those doors, don't you? Or another door. You don't stay here all week. You're sent out by this church. So you're missionaries too. You just may not get the glory. You may not get a, pre- you may not get a bumper sticker. You can have mine. And let that bumper sticker remind you, please, stand in the gap to save those that God has put in your care. Brother Loman. great message for every one of us that we that have been saved and born again redeemed by the precious blood of Christ it reminds us of our responsibility as a child of God to stand in the gap to point someone else to Christ to tell others to warn them to share the love of God with them but to warn them that there is a judgment to come and the only way to escape that judgment is to find refuge in Jesus Christ and so every one of us ought to be challenged Lord, use me. Help me to be that man, that woman, that boy or girl, young person that's willing to stand up for Christ and stand, stand up and tell others about a Savior who's mighty to save. Would you let God use you this morning? If you're here this morning, you've never been saved and you can't lay hand on heart or you can't give a Bible reason and say, I know that I'm saved and I know I'm born again. If I were to die today, I know I'd go to heaven. If you can't say that, We invite you to come during this invitation. We'd love to take the Bible and help you to find assurance of your salvation this morning. So whatever your need is, whatever God is dealing with you about, you come this morning. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this message, and we thank you for the hope that we have in Christ our Savior. And Father, we pray this morning that each one of us will examine ourselves in light of eternity, in light of your soon coming, and and judgment upon this world are we the servants the witnesses that we ought to be father we pray that you would burden our hearts for lost souls and help us to be obedient to take the gospel uh, to those around us but father we also pray as a church that there's one here that's never been saved that your holy spirit might have the liberty to just convict them and draw them this morning they might come by faith trusting christ as savior You know the needs in this room. We just pray you're blessed today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we sing, as Brother Charlie leads us, if you have a decision in your heart or maybe you just want to come and pray, you come this morning as God's Spirit leads you. Sing just as I am. Just as I am. Would you come to the Savior? Realize that He is your only hope. Would you place your faith and trust in Jesus and receive Him as your Savior? Child of God, are you standing in the gap this morning? Are you telling others about Christ? as I am and waiting on to rid my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each bottle We appreciate each one of you. We're so thankful for the Menaries and what God is doing in their lives, in the work and the ministry in Romania. We just give God the praise and the glory. I'm going to, yes, ma'am. I almost forgot about that.
our ladies put together gift bags that we like to give to the missionaries' wives when they come to visit us to show you how much we love you and appreciate all you do for the ministry. And it sounds to me like you do a lot, and I don't think you could get by without you. <laughs> Thank you. Amen, and that's very wise words. Very thankful for Brother Dave and Miss, Mil Miss Melissa and all the work they do for the Lord. I'm going to ask them if they would to stand to the back, back there, and give you an opportunity to shake their hand as you leave this morning. You may have questions for Brother Dave or Miss Melissa. They'd be glad, I'm sure, to answer any questions that you have. But um, let them know you'll be praying for them, and be sure and get one of those big bumper stickers and take with you. You can put it on your refrigerator or somewhere your parents allow you to put it. And, uh, but I think there may be some magnets back there, too, so that may be a little easier. And, uh, but uh, we appreciate the Menarius, and we appreciate our people who have been giving through Faith Promise to support the Menarius and also other missionaries. And remember, next month is our Faith Promise uh, conference, and we're looking forward to that. We'll have uh, three different missionaries here with us. And so we're excited about that. But you look at that list of missionaries on the bulletin. Uh, we, uh, they're, they're on there because God's people care. They give. They support through faith missions. And, and we pray that we'll see that list continue to grow and we're able to take on more missionaries in the future. But we appreciate the work that you do. We're going to be dismissed. Brother Charlie may have a course. And then after that, we'll be dismissed and be sure and visit with the Menaries. We're going we're gonna to forego the course this morning due to the time. Uh, so I'll just ask Brother Eddie Bloomer if you'll word our prayer for us. That's it. <laughs>